I was trying to remember what I was supposed to say. <laughs> <laughs> you were just like, I thought you were having one of those like, <clears throat> moments <laughs> where you're just centering. Welcome to another video by Watercolors Aquarium Gallery, brought to you from the Aquarium Rush Studios in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Today, Charles and I are going to have some fun without Ben. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a little weird, but you know, it's going to be a lot of fun. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and we get to see all this fun stuff first, so let's get started. Which box do we want to start with? Uh, I guess we can start here because it's box one. Cool. <laughs> See, what, what do we do without him? We can't even decide which box to get started. <laughs> <laughs> Our fearless leader. No. This should be a pretty fun one. I made this one pretty much on my own again, so we'll see if you know what's in there. Ah, that's oh. a good place to start. I wasn't expecting a uh, better Mahakiensis on this order, but I'm not going to say no. <laughs> Those are really good ones, too. Huge. I can already tell some males from females. This to me is the wild betta that needs to take off around here. They can take hard water really well. They are absolutely stunning. More people should be keeping these fish. I wouldn't say they can take hard water. They prefer it. Yeah. They're a true hard water betta. It's still hard for me to believe, so I always have to put like a little asterisk on it. <laughs> Look, that's for you. Ah, cool snails. Nice little rainbow bag of snails. Oh no. What? Okay, I'm gonna brace yourself. Okay. I want you to think about the last group of cool loaches in that we got in. This is the exact opposite. Of oh, that. thank God! <laughs> <laughs> Look how fat they, they are. They're so <laughs> chunky. They are very chubby and big, and not about the size that could be eaten by a betta. <laughs> Which is the last ones we got were that size. They were angel hair, not spaghetti. Oh, it's a type of it's a type of uh, pleco. Yes, we actually got some plecos in this order. I pretty much, anytime there are plecos that I think are reasonably priced, I order them. And these are one of our favorite reasonably priced plecos. This is the Colombian zebra pleco? They don't no, like it. I'm sorry, these are orange seam plecos. And oh. we got a really good deal on them this week. Great size, they look beautiful. Don't expect most plecos to eat your algae, but as a decorative addition to your tank, they're awesome. Yeah, there's like 700 species of pleco. Expecting all of them to be algae eaters is dumb. Yeah, and I would say <laughs> most of them are not primarily algae eaters. No, a lot of them are wood eaters. Corydoras trilineatus. <sighs> I love seeing these guys wiggle around because they've got their little flags. When most people say Julie Coricat, they actually mean this. It's been several years since I've seen a true Julie. All right, I'm going to hand this to you because I'm not even going to try to <laughs> pronounce that. Um, I'm not gonna try and pronounce it either. These are butterfly hillstream loaches. <laughs> it just has the scientific name written on here, which kudos to them for writing that all out because it's a very long one. You can tell that someone's writing this and didn't predict ahead how much space they were gonna need. And at yep. the end, you can see them panic a little and start writing a little bit smaller. Such a long one. These are so cute and gorgeous. A spotty hillstream loach, not a stripy one. Um, but they still have a pretty similar look to the hills, the reticulated, which is the most common. Just a little bit more fluttery. Are they going to get as big? Uh, perhaps about the same size. Okay. We got some nice ember tetras. Nice. Great nano fish, great orange, beautiful. That's one of my favorite of the small nano tetras. You can see that. Because they do kind of just look like a mini version of a regular hypesibrite god. Oh, I almost missed them because they're small. Better <laughs> Here's a fancy copper. Ooh, how does he look? Pretty copper. Pretty fancy. This one is a half moon, but he's a nice pink. Cute. He's blushing. I know, I love when they kind of make eye contact with you at the back. Here, let's keep the bedders together. Yes. Oh, one box down. Yes. Next. Here, I'll start opening up this one while you take that out. <laughs> Will I destroy this one? <laughs> one of these days, I really need to see you just like rip off the top box, <laughs> rip the, ta the tape. Oh, oh. Give me my fish! Gives a lot. There we go. More juvenile. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted one good pop on those rubber bands today. <laughs> that was a good shoot. <laughs> Alright, next. Oh, these are for you. They're the Aspidoras! 
Oh my goodness. Um, are they supposed to be that tiny? Yes. Really? Yes. They're smaller than Cory's? Aspidoras are a smaller relative of Cory cats. Most of them don't get very big. Uh, actually, uh, if I remember correctly, this is a little bit on the larger side for them. Wow. Uh, usually what you see is they look like someone took a Cory cat, shrunk it down to about this big, and then stretched it out a little bit. That's correct. They're like a long, skinny Cory cat. That is really, really cute. and. I love the pattern on them too. I love it. I'm very happy with that. Okay. Uh, Pinky Corys. Nice little group of wigglies. Lots of small catfish on this one. <laughs> because catfish are cute, okay? Come on. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, wow. <laughs> those are those barbs. That's got to be like full size for them. Thing. Yeah, so we uh, got ourselves some Desmopuntus lineatus just because we were curious. Um, this is one of the few of the Desmopuntus barbs that as adults have horizontal barring. And, uh, you know, we, we were curious. And they are more or less exactly what I expected, although I did not expect them to come in full size like this. Yeah, that's a beautiful group. I can't wait to see them color up. And they're not going to get super colorful, but color up would just mean get some really shiny green neons. Oh. Those are a little, I almost didn't think that they were green neons for a second. <laughs> Great little group. I love the green neons. If you're doing a smaller tank, I feel like they're a better option. And they then, also don't seem to form a true school like the other pericariodons do. Speaking of, regular neon tetras, large neon tetras, those are like at least twice the size of the green neons we just unpacked. <laughs> and, you know, as they should be. <laughs> Hmm. Crystal red shrimp. Oh, is that a caradina? Yes, it is a caradina. Crystal reds, I think, are probably the most accessible caradina to breed, but we have had some issues trying to breed them in our hard water. So let us know if you do have success with them here, um, but we'll have them here for you to try. They seem to live just fine in our water. Yeah. Oh. There's a bag. Lots of bags. Oh, I'll, get, I'll let you talk about that. These are for Cotter Rainbows. We've been going a little bit crazy with Pseudobugos lately. I don't think this is the only species in this box. For Cotter, I think, is my favorite. I just love the bright yellow and the contrast with the blue eye is beautiful. Um, tiny fish, very flashy, very beautiful. That might be my favorite of the Pseudobugos. I, I don't think it's a bad choice. Oh, look. Yes, we got another Borrelia species. Everybody is very jealous of our Hillstream. You mean the Sarius? No, this, I think this is actually a Borrelia, but another Hillstream Danio species, I gotcha. should say. Um, they get a little bit bigger, three or four inches, I think. Not as big as the Apsarius that we have. Yeah. Very fast moving, very beautiful, very great schoolers. Great for larger tanks. I just love their behavior. Mm -hmm. They're fascinating to watch. They make me think of... They're called uh, trout daniels a lot. And mm -hmm. The more I work with them, the more I'm like, that's an accurate description. They do behave very trouty. Yeah, I can see that. Get that out of here. <laughs> Next. I guess we can go with that one. All right, we'll do mine. Uh, while you're working on that stuff, I'll get this stuff cut open. All right, let's see if I can do the rubber band. Oh. Uh, it went six inches. <laughs> oh, there's some big guys in here. What is that? Ah, electric blue cars. Cute group. I love getting these in. It's one of the few crazy color cichlids that I get excited about. It's one of the few, too, that I sort of think is an improvement on the natural fish. Yeah, they're pretty. And the nice thing about the car is they're pretty tall for their size. Yeah, and they will get like, I think up, up to six inches, but yeah. compared to other South American cichlids that get that big, they're, they're whips. Ba they're basically, you know, tame. Pearl Garamis. Yay! My husband's really hoping that I take some of these home and this batch looks pretty good. I might have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to say no to an Anabantoid at this Exactly, and this is a beautiful one. A little bit more peaceful than the other similarly sized gouramis. Which is strange to me just because they're slightly larger than a lot of the common gouramis, yeah. but they're 
somehow they're more fall. I don't know. Yeah, and it's not hard to be more peaceful than a three spot karami. <laughs> more Amato shrimp. Great, good, big ones. Awesome. We always need more. Always. Ooh, look at him. That's a really pretty bada. Very unique coloration. It's like like pale blue and yellow and peach. It's like someone, this is gonna sound really weird. It looks like someone took a mustard gas and messed up crossing it with some sort of copper string. Yeah, I've never seen one quite like that before. Wow. Yeah. It's wow. almost like a pastel blue. Like when he's not bat lit. Huh. That's really Anyways, amazing. I had to stop and appreciate that. <laughs> Got a few more Bloody Mary shrimp. Just trying to keep enough shrimp in stock. That's a tall order. <laughs> yes, and they're a good bright red. They're in the bag a little pale, but the ones we've seen color up from these guys have been stunning. I've had a lot of questions about what's the difference between a Bloody Mary and a cherry. And my understanding is that a Bloody Mary has two layers of red pigment, whereas a cherry has one. Yeah, and they usually have are full red even down through the legs, whereas cherries might be kind of clear there. Sunset flatties, good, beautiful, bright orange. I think this is the most common live bearer in the store. Yeah, because we all kind of like them. <laughs> well, and yeah. if we're going to choose a pattern, I think we may as well just choose a good, bright color. All right. Blue paradise fish. This is another alternative to some of the larger garamis, but definitely still has a little bit of the bite of some of the larger garamis. Um, Mostly with things like them, they can be a little bit territorial. Um, but an easy breeder, too, if you're looking into that sort of thing. Great bubble nester. So they're just looking at us like, fine. Uh, more pseudomugos. These are signifers. They came in large. Okay, Good I don't, pins. It's I don't not think one, this is a species I've ever seen. Not one that shows up very often at all, which is sort of why I had to order both of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but definitely a little bit different. And beautiful in their own right. They can have like a little patch of like peach on their dorsal bit. Yeah, the only way you can go wrong with that genus is if you order the brackish one for your freshwater tank. Oops. <laughs> All right, zebra neurites, great good restock on snails, great algae eaters, very active. That's about it about neurites. <laughs> cat person things when Ben's not here. I know. There's room on the table. Oh, it bounced up here and hit that way. So it went like four inches. <laughs> Woohoo! Fly and be free. Whoa. Well, I'm going to start off here. Otto! Yay! <laughs> Never, never seem to have enough autos around here. Yeah, I definitely think people have caught on to how much more fun these fish are to have in larger groups, which means that people are buying them in larger groups, so thank you guys for that. Which means that we're working harder to get more in so you can keep buying them in exactly. larger groups. Exactly. <laughs> not going to complain about it, though. No, not at all. What's next? The geos. Yes, we've been getting some questions about geos lately, and some of them get pretty large. This species, I did a little bit of research on. I'm really not a geo person, um, but they should only get about six inches. This is Tenio Paris. Um, so we're gonna see how they do. They're still babies right now, but I'm sure they'll color up real nice. Here's a store staple. Yes, chili rasboras. The only truly shrimp safe fish in my <laughs> mind. Too tiny to eat them. Although these guys might be a good runner up. Is this a Sundadanio? Mm -hmm. This is Sundadanio goblinus, which is the neon blue. And they have a coloration that you really don't see in any other fish. So it does sometimes take a little time to get that true color out of them, but it's so rewarding. They're some of the more, they're little, just tiny jewels, you know? They're so pretty. I uh, saw the Brazilian cardinal and I had a few jokes for that that I'm just going to let some adult viewers think on. <laughs> <laughs> it is fun that we 
you get to pick. Maybe I should try the Colombian ones next time. They do come from different river systems, and you can actually tell them apart. Hmm. Did I get the right ones? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the Brazilian ones uh, have a full blue stripe down all the way to the tail. The um, Colombian ones, they usually have a bunch of shorter blue. Whoa! Sounds better. Orange Flash Capchoyes. That might be one of the... I, I'll, I'll be honest. I, I don't really get excited about the Super Reds or the Triple Reds. The Orange Flash is genuinely impressive. Something about the simplicity of that coloration on the fins, it's, it's not complicated, but man is that color bright, you know? It's cool. It's just cool. It's just impressive that people can do stuff like that, you know? That we can breathe that those traits into fish. Gold Ram. Oh, Gold Ram. Mm -hmm. I was trying to read it and I thought it said Gobo. And I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> gold yes. Ram makes a lot gold more Ram. sense. Another good dwarf cichlid. Rams are popular for good reason. We haven't had the golds in a while. I think that they're pretty. They have a little bit of orange on them too. I do really like the gold rams. Mm -hmm. I think they're a little underappreciated. Yeah, I think so too. Well, we'll see. We haven't had them in a long time. Whoa. Another half moon. Maybe as bad as they've been doing lately, I swear. This like, looks like, um, you know, like someone took like paint splatter. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, it's like, I don't better. <laughs> yeah, he's like, dunked his head in the paint bucket. <laughs> Got a bright turquoise body and then a white head. He wanted a closer look, all right? <laughs> I'm sure that he will probably change colors. I'm just curious to how. Oh boy. We got some Rokovi Achilles. We should have a good amount of Achilles in this order. A lot of people would argue that it's the most colorful freshwater fish in the world, and I don't have a strong argument against that except <laughs> other Nothos. But... Yes, there's no losers in that genus. <laughs> like this guy. Speaking of, ooh, <laughs> Notho he's Brankius really nice. Honestly, every time I see this one, it shocks me so maybe this is my favorite those dark red fins are really striking i just love his face yes <laughs> and this is a fat pair like the female she looks really good black fox better be a good one i don't know why but i just was hoping nick was right around the corner there so i could like whip it like a frisbee at him <laughs> <laughs> Do not abuse our employees here. Oh, we just have some gentle hazing. <laughs> Character building activities. Whoa. Nice. That's the black orchid crown tail. The other one sold so quickly I barely got to see it, so we got another one so that other people could get to see it too. This one has some very delicate fin lines. Yeah. Which Are his pel pelvic fins clear? No. No. That's... They just were. He's so dark, I couldn't see the actual contrast between his fins and his body. Another copper. That one's really cool. I just really like the bokat finish on stuff. Mm -hmm. I think, personally, I just don't get too excited about a lot of the fancy fin types, but I really like the colors and how they can format onto a like that. This one's really special because on the surface it looks just black and white, but when he turns, you get all those greens. Green! Okay, so these are the L129. Uh, these are the Colombian zebras. <laughs> Man, these might be, might be the biggest Colombian zebras I've seen. And they don't get that big. So these are probably full, just about breeder size, I would say. I don't, I don't know how to sex them, but it definitely looks like there are males and females in here. Some are fat, some are not fat. Look at the, um... Whoa, yeah, the little comb. They have Velcro on their fins. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that they can really wedge themselves into driftwood and nobody can get them out, I think. Yeah, that's the, that's the ooh, gardener Achilles. Three pairs. This is definitely, I don't know, and the way he said that made me think, like, shave and haircut too fast. <laughs> Um, this is definitely the, in my mind, the beginner killifish. It's really accessible, they're very colorful, they're easy to breed. They're, you can actually breed them in different strategies. You can do the mop spawning, you can do, uh, from what I've been told, you can peat spawn them, and then uh, you can do combinations in between there. So they really are a good way to get into trying different strategies for killifish. And for the less committed, a brick of moss in there, you might see some babies pop up from time to time either way. Notho Patrizzi. 
Cool. Patrizia, I think, would be the technical way to say it. It's sort of like they have the same red on their tail that the rubricinus has on their fins, you know? Just rotate yeah. it around. I like this one. So pinwheel and color scheme <laughs> on Nothos. I mean, with Nothobronchias, that's sort of how it looks. Oh. Blue shrimp, they sent them, yes! More blue shrimp for you guys. These are a really nice blue. I think blue shrimp are by far the most popular strain right now. I would say so as well. And uh, can't blame anyone. <laughs> it's my favorite, so. Panda Corys. Yay, cute little wiggly guys. Oh, they're so cute. Definitely one of the smaller species. They're not a true dork, but they're definitely on the smaller side as far as Cory goes. I like the smallest Cory. Cory. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We've got two trifasciatas left. We've got trifasciata pencil fish, which these look fantastic. And a pistogram of trifasciata. Nice. Honestly, the combination would be amazing. Somebody please do that. Yeah, look pencil at, fish and uh, look pisco. Look fins on Whoa. this. It's like someone took like a little bit of the color off of like a coral red and was just like, just stick it on their fins and only their fins. Yeah, I gotta say, I was expecting them to be cool, but I wasn't really expecting them to be pretty. <laughs> these are pretty. Shiny too. I'm looking forward to seeing these color up. But yeah, Epistos and uh, Pencil Fish, that's a pretty winning combo there. Match made in heaven. And Trifasciata, that's definitely up there on my favorite Epistos. It's pretty cool. Very beautiful, great color. Ooh, good one to end on, speaking of great color. Honey Garamis. They don't look pretty yet. <laughs> <laughs> these are the wild type honeys? Yep, these are just the Honey Garami Honey Garamis. Oh, cool. And uh, I honestly think that they're the prettiest. I love the sunsets. I think that it's a great color, but the contrast you get with that bright orange, the black, the little bit of blue if you're lucky. I love honey garamis. Great centerpiece fish for a small tank. If you're looking for something that can go by itself, which so many people are, honey garamis are a good option. Or you could do a pair. Maybe yeah, you get some I, breeding behavior out of them. I honestly think that like a lot of the ways that people keep that is, you know, if you're keeping them the way that we recommend you keep them. <laughs> honey garamis would fit the bill too. Mm -hmm. A little five gallon with some heat. Totally. And they have so much personality with their little hair fins at the front. <laughs> feelers. So cute. All right, well, that was a lot of fish, and I think definitely some fun stuff for the people out there. Um, be sure to subscribe to our channel to see more videos like this. Have a good guys. You want to just want to do this? Yeah. Outro. Make sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram. Um, check out the Watercolors Aquarium Gallery podcast, and give us a comment below if there's anything that you think should be in one of these boxes next time. I got nothing for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's put away some fish. Um, until then, have lots of fun and keep those hands wet. <laughs> Done! Video over. <laughs>